an early start on the Friday for this, and I use this term without any qualification, Festival of Darts. 158 players here over the course of this weekend. You may have been watching the Premier League. You may have been watching the World Series over the last few weeks. The biggest names in the game knocking lumps out of each other week after week after week. Now we have everybody. Every single member of the tour, bar two. Adam Hunt's gone on holiday. Adrian Lewis isn't that fast. We have challenge tour players. We've got development tour players. We've got players out of the pub, but only one of them will take the title. Last year it was Andrew Gilding in one of the most sensational fairy tales that sport has ever seen this year. Who will it be? I'm Dan Dawson. Alongside me for the first couple of days of action here on board two is Paul Nicholson. And we start with Wesley Plaisier, the world master, and Connor Scott, who came very, very close to keeping his spot on the tour. Thank you, gentlemen. First missed out. Wesley to throw first. And is now here, on. having won one of the qualifying events at a Riley's club up and down the country we held these things. Nico, it is not a bad way to start the tournament here on stage two. Yeah, not bad at all. 40. Starting with a world master who currently has that title to defend in the future against someone who is fresh off the tour, like you said, Dan, and someone who is looking Six. to rediscover a new level of confidence you could say because at the end of 2023 Scott was playing oh, some good darts but he just left himself with a little bit too much to do at the end of last season to keep his tour privileges but coming back to the UK Open for the third consecutive year is a good oh, way to just continue his career yeah Connor Kind of fancied his chances, I think, of winning his card back at Q School. Didn't happen. He was crestfallen. 85. But he's got back on the horse. Played some decent stuff on the Challenge Tour. That's already underway. Obviously won one of the qualifying events to get here. That's why he's wearing the red shirt, as you can see. There'll be a Six. few of those dotted around over the course of this weekend. Could somebody do a Barry Lynn? The bin man who reached the last oh, 60 quarterfinals. Quarter finals a few years ago, beat Gary Anderson along the way. Yeah, we walked into the venue this morning, Dan, and we saw Connor Scott practicing on the stage, well, getting a little 40. bit familiarized with the surroundings, but he knows them very well already. Yeah, he has made a bit of a mess of double five there, giving Scott a chance at a 144. Because he is going to have one of the smallest checkouts on the board to get the first leg of the UK Open. Wesley require five. This can be awkward. If you're looking at double two now. Yeah, and gets double two Wesley for the opening it. leg here on board Take two. Now it's not just this Game. we've got. We've got the main stage action, obviously. That's on ITV4 in the UK. But there are boards three oh, to eight. Three. Obviously, with so many players, you've got a lot of games going on simultaneously. But you can have a look on the Dark Connect system to keep up to date yeah, with seven. everything. We'll try and keep you updated as this goes on. But there is so much stuff happening that keeping across it all is going to be tricky. 108. You're going to see plenty of those over the next couple of days as well. But game starting at 11 o'clock, you've got the likes of Christian 44. Kist against Patrick Hiriets. And you've got Redek Saganski against George Killington, which is out on board seven. And Saganski, funnily enough, the last time we walked into this building hey, at the start of a tournament in November for the Players' Championship Finals, it was Scott that was practicing with Saganski on this stage before play began. Oh, and that was a Are final of a Pro Tour event last year. Mm, this is on. Mm, wanted the bullseye to leave tops. 101. And that'll do. Leaves himself single to double. Uh, plenty of good games over the next few coming up on this board. You got 134. Oh. Squid against Plazier. You got Rusty Jake Rodriguez against Ron Mullenkamp after this. And you got double 18 for Scott. No that score. won't do. And Plazier gets Plazier a chance for 2 0, albeit one of the hardest on the dartboard. Two halves, big Wes. 
Now, I'm interested to see what happens here, because I'm not sure whether Scott wanted the 10 or a 6 in the previous visit. Yeah, I think he wanted the 6. And ultimately, he's had four darts of double over two visits. He hasn't taken any of them, no matter what double he's looked at. And most of the players in this tournament, Dan, will expect to take 167 in six darts. Does he get a shot at double? He does not, and that is, at this level, 57. a mistake. Can he require 20? That looks awkward. He's going to go high, moving over to the right-hand side, yeah. and that's exactly level, where he was aiming. Want a piece in this one? On. Somewhat ironic smile there from Connor, who, over the last couple of months, has been trailing different Four equipment. Hundred. The barrels haven't changed, but the point element, the stem and flight combination, he's tinkering at the minute to find something that really works. He's had a problem 80. with the darts wobbling in the board a bit too much. He's trying to get something that's a bit stable. Has he gone for a larger flight? Did he have like the sort of very trimmed down little flights previously? Yeah, he had molded kite flights over the last couple of years. But he's gone to this particular shape because he signed a new deal 85. with a manufacturer and they don't do kites. So at the minute he's trying to use a small standard flight with a view to maybe getting something made in a bespoke way. Well, if he has had a problem with getting his darts to go in authoritatively in the board and getting them, I mean, they look like they're going in pretty yeah, well it. here and holding their position, they're not loose, they're not wobbling, then getting a more stable flight through the air, it's more likely to achieve that, isn't it? Yes, it is. But if you look at his barrels, there's that defined scallop towards the back of the barrel. That's where the thumb and the forefinger go. Because he's throwing so far to the back, that stability at the end must be perfect, otherwise it's going to go in too high. Oh, that's awkward. Big flight for Big Wes. Knocks that dart away. So far, we are going with the throw. 130. Well, that leads to single to double, 16. but the Dutchman on double eights. And he pins it. Leg. It is Wesley all going Wesley. with throw at the moment. Full leg, it's Connor to throw first. Saw Wesley obviously Game win the World Masters, but personally, when he first appeared on the radar, I was seeing him on the European tour where he was magnificent. No, going all the way to the final session of action in Munich and running Luke Humphreys very, very close in that tournament. He backed it up as well One. with further performances on the European tour. And from then... He really did look like one of the most dangerous players not on the circuit. Four, I think he's getting one. better as each year goes by as well. He's just doing other bits and gaining this experience, which will ready him for the tour in the next two or three years, one, in my opinion. He's been part of an incredible Dutch national team as well with the likes of Jelle Klaassen in the last 12 months. He's, he's a real top flight Dutch player without 93. being a PDC tour card holder yet. But he might just be one of those people who isn't too fussed about getting to the tour on a full-time basis oh, yet. He's maybe earmarking it for when he's around the age of 30 to 35. Right, then I can give it everything I've got. A bit like Nico Springer. He's not panicking in getting to the 60. tour immediately. It will happen. It's just a case well, of when and not if. He's certainly got talent, despite what is quite an unorthodox action does sort of swivel as he throws the dart from right to left but if he's getting the timing right and releasing it at the right time it's not a problem you can see how it could become a problem if his timing slightly off but everybody if you're timing slightly off lots of players will struggle to hit what they want it's a bit like a sprinkler head from right to left when he throws it yeah, not quite Nathan Derry but double top now for 114 would have been the first break of throw. Wesley plies here, misses the opportunity. It doesn't have to go 25 here. Might look elsewhere. Yeah, double four. 
very creative thinker as Connor Scott. And he's just shown you that you don't have to go 25. You don't even have to go treble 11. There are other ways of getting 65 that can be very beneficial. Well, we've seen him leave 46 before. And a single 19 there would have left 46. And the bonus there you get is a single to double, but you've got a big area to aim for, the 10 or the 6. So there's a little bit more margin for error. And that is probably part of his thinking in terms of going that route. Part of it will just be, I throw at the trouble 19 a lot, and he probably likes double four. But that as a fallback plan isn't a bad one. Yeah, there's lots of dark players out there who just automatically think when a number comes up, that's the way I should go. Think about other options. That's one of the things I admire about Connor. He thinks laterally about how he gets to zero in 501. 30. Well, the only chance we've had, the only dart at double for a break of throw came in that last leg for Wesley Plies here. He wasn't able to take 60. it. He doesn't need a break of throw in this game. But it's perhaps not surprising that this one is tight. It's one of the reasons they've put it in. It's one of the picks of the first round games, to be honest. I'd have to agree. You've got one of the best performers on the Challenge Tour last year. Plazia comes in as number four of the 96. qualifying list from that area. And, of course, Scott came through the Harlow qualifier, which is not that far from where he lives, just around the M25 motorway. And that just goes to show that those big barrels from Big Wes can all be fit in the same segment. He kind of needed a big visit there. 57. Where's the require? Eight. Scott is still within striking distance if there's a mistake. <laughs> so there's no there. mistake. Double two it? does the job again. First. Game Where is this break of throw going to come from? For Connor, he's going to have to stick in a 12 dart, you feel, to get that statement well, break of throw. Two. And you're better off getting it sooner rather than later because Plazier is starting to look very comfortable. 98. The game's going on on the outer boards. As we mentioned, Killington versus Zaganski. Zaganski, 3 1 down in that one. The 93. very impressive and very tall talent from the West Country, Dom Taylor. 3 1 up on Brandon Weston, who's one of our 57. pub qualifiers or Riley's Club qualifiers, if you like. Jack Mail, player that you'd highlighted before we came on air. Paul Nicholson, he was floundering yeah, against Martin Draft, but has dragged himself back into that. Trails by three legs to two. Yeah, another off the rank in the northeast. Jack's a, a great player who is just gradually picking away at his career and just getting experience. Maybe earmarking the PDC Pro Tour in the next five years, but this is a big moment for Jack to make his first UK Open. It would be a huge victory to take out Draft of the Netherlands, who's an excellent player, someone that Plazier knows extremely well. Yeah, another new tour card Only holder we first saw on the European Tour, Martijn Draft. Beat Rob Cross in Kiel, if I remember rightly. And Connor Scott unable to take the 1-1-3. One, one, 52. Where's the Uruguay? 146. Options here. Two treble 19s, maybe. Someone who doesn't fiddle with his kit at all. 57. From the first time we I mean, saw him on the European tour, one. he has not changed an, a thing about flights, stems, points or barrels. Now, that was for the 45. This yeah, is 3-3. Three, three. Interesting that I've said he's a creative thinker when it comes to doubles, but I don't think he's got a favourite because in one. that moment, he's got 51 if he prefers tops, why doesn't he go 11 tops? But there, he's just showing a bit of flexibility. Yeah, I was kind of expecting him to oh, leave tops. Tends to do a lot of his work there, but electing in the end for double 16. Did the job for him, no harm done. But I, I don't oh, know. I can understand his thinking for some of the shots he's making. That one, not really sure. Sometimes it's just best not to guess and just let him oh. do his thing, but... What we do know is that the winner of this game would take on the winner of the first game on the main stage. Hope I poor of New Zealand up against Yellow Class, and that's a great game of darts. 
Yeah, that's not scheduled to get going till midday. Main stage action starting a little later the eight. than the rest of the boards. You just wonder what story's going to come about today. Friday at the UK Open oh, always it. delivers something. And last year it delivered the winner in Andrew Gilding. And the last two or three One years, eight. it's given us great stories. I wonder well, if one of these nine. two are going to be that story. Plazier to hold again, needs 20 in bull, or that for double five. Eight. This is that break chance right here. So many options on 67. 67. He's looking south, so it's gonna be 17s. Is it 10 for tops? It is, he goes for tops this time, Four. and he does What's not he get it. And why did he go for and tops there when he'd gone for double 16 ten. in the previous leg? This is what Plazier does. He just takes his time before going for an important shot like this. Double two, he's found twice already in this match. Okay. And he's found it for a third time. How often do you see that in the best of 11 match? Three double twos hit. That's not even the end of the game yet. Well, double two oh. is saving Wesley Plyzier here. Connor Scott and Plyzier have both had one dart at the end of combination finishes to break their opponent. Neither has taken it, which means Plyzier has the upper hand. But there is so little between them in this game. It's not as high quality in terms of the averages as I thought. I thought we'd be in the, in the 90s or in the mid 80s. But it is close and it is competitive and you can see the frustration from Scott. I think he understood just how big that dart was. 436. You wanted to get that break to be 4-3 up, and then you hold from there, you're 5-3 up. But now, all of a sudden, things are turned around, and you're thinking, there's a possibility I could be 5-3. Down, needing to win the last three legs of the contest just to play in round number two. And time is running out for the sniper. 140. Plies here is applying the pressure. If I may be fair to Connor Scott as a qualifier, this is an awful draw. 93. If it's I were him and I got Plazier pair. round one, I would have hated that. Yeah, look, uh, Plazier won't be happy about drawing Connor Scott. Of the various Riley's qualifiers, Scott is 43. arguably the most notable. Certainly one of them. He's got to do his job here from 151. Oh, but just imagine if Plazier was to take this out. Forty-four. Automatically think in this spot that we are going to go the distance. Double four. Eight. But an easier chance for Plazier. Had something very similar to this earlier on. And couldn't take it. Loads of options on 108. 20s, 18s, 19s, 17s. He's going the 19s route. And is that awkward? I like the 19s Two, route on 108. Six. But too many players, on when they block that 57, eight. go for the second shot on it. They should go for 17s and double 19 with two open beds. Now, is double two going to haunt... Plazier this time in that area of the board's getting so much attention. Well, consistently, double two has been the go to double in this game. Half the legs have been won on double two. And part of the reason for that is they've not been great on any of the other doubles. They keep finding themselves down there. Well, what's weird is that double two is not even a tertiary double. So you've got 16s as the primary. Eights as the secondary, fours as the tertiary, and then twos and ones are even further in drift. Yeah, well, we've seen 12 darts missed at double by Scott and eight missed by Plyzier in this game. So 20 missed darts at double in total, which is part of the reason why they keep finding themselves right down on the second smallest double on the board. Oh, I it. Highest checkout has been 65 in this game. Nothing's been 
going according to plan straight away in this match so far. Oh, 138. I'm not sure who, not sure who Connor Scott is actually looking at in this crowd, but he's definitely got somebody with him who he's trying to draw inspiration oh. from. The atmosphere here is fairly quiet for a Friday afternoon, as it always is. It takes a bit of time for things to warm up here. It's not 2018 where everything Sick. was called here. Where's he recall 151? That, that might be a missed opportunity there for Scott. One treble and you get to a one treble combo. As it is, it's a very difficult finish he's going to have to take out. And Plaza has left himself single to double. It might need something like this for the sniper. Just how valuable will that last dart at treble 18 be for Plaza? Because Where's he in making 58? this single to double, it could make all the difference. Monstrous. Another hold of throw, and Scott now needs two in a row, otherwise, he's going to be the first person out. Well, improbably, that is Big Wes's biggest finish of the match, but more importantly, he's just gone in two darts. It's a single to double, it's nothing special, but it's gone, and he's taken it out under pressure. And there's not been a whole lot of that going on in this game. Whoever does lose this game, they are not going to be. The first person out because that is Yitzhak van der Waal. He's lost 6-3 six six. to Johnny Haynes. The punk. Played all right as well. Averaged over 95. That's Johnny Haynes' nickname, by the way. I'm not, I'm not criticising Yitzhak van der Waal. Oh, Man, he beat Luke Little in the Euro Tour qualifiers just a week or two ago. And nobody wants to be the first person eliminated. It's a very long way to go back anywhere from my head. Unless your name is Ryan Searle or Gary Anderson, of course. Yeah, there aren't, there aren't many down these ends. Well, Plaisier had gone quite aggressive Six. there because a ton 40 would have left a bogey number. But a lot of players are doing those sorts of shots now. Less so from 306, more from things like 302. Oh, yeah, I'm just getting the feeling that Plaisier is not as mathematically savvy as someone like a Klassen is who could prospectively be his opponent in the next game. 140. To take us Got the distance. 82. He'd love to get the ball. He'll have to settle for a shot at tops. 42. That could be that. Because he has had shots at things like this, but hasn't taken one yet. But if he takes this, he wins the match. He'll get a match start. It's double 16 for a 6-4 win. Seven match people. dart missed and Connor Scott is allowed back to the Got board to take us all the way in our 40. opening match on stage two. I can't leave double two from here. Double ten. Comes yeah. in very handy. Scott. An excellent Seven. start to the UK Open leg. on board two. To throw first. Lots of holes of throw. Will that continue? Or will somebody by the name of Connor Scott, get a break oh, to get into round number two in the red shirt. This would be a signal for Plaisier to lose. Ten holes to throw. He's already missed a match dart. If he were to lose, particularly after kicking off 1 3 4 in the last leg. 57. They will both walk away. Whoever loses this will walk away feeling they could have won it and perhaps should have. It's only mid 80s averages. Neither have played to their capabilities. There have been little opportunities oh, here and there. And while the quality eight. hasn't been as high as we perhaps expected, it's been a good contest. All you want to do is get into round two. You don't care about the, the oh. stats. It's just a case of getting the six legs and negotiating the Friday afternoon. Get in the hat for tonight when the big boys join 93. the draw. But it could be an extremely long day. It could be as long as 12 hours. Yeah, if you end up being the final game on the main stage tonight... Oh, he needed to fit it up to get to a finish. Plays, he's got two visits from here. Set it up, take it out, wrap up the game. He'd love a taunt. 41. Hold your horses a second. He did get a match start from 106 in the previous leg. 58. But again, trebleless, like he was in the first three darts of this leg. It just costs Scott. Maybe a little too much. 51 and bull. 51 and bull for a 108. 
Wesley Plaisier misses a second match star. There has been nothing even faintly resembling this sort of checkout in this match so far. And we're not going to see it here. And so Plaisier will get more match starts, but he's going to have to burn one to get to a double. He's got to get this single. In these spots, this single nine is not easy. Made it look easy. Last shot. Match start four is not simple, but it's in. Wesley Plazier is the first person to win on board number two at the expense of one of the Riley's qualifiers, one of the best as well. The winner from Harlow is gone. And now Plazier will have a break before he plays either Hopai Puha or Yala Klaassen. It could be a battle of two Dutch internationals. Maybe the Kiwi could have something to say about that. But the first person through on board two, Wesley Plazier. Well done. He's do done this one, Mike. Six legs to five.